Chad and Halfhill back at you with uh, the Des Moines Arts Festival curated video series. We've got a series now. That's what happens when you do more than one. Um, I'm with Patricia De Leon, and um, uh, we're going to talk about her work. We're going to talk about the Emerging Horizons uh, exhibition. We'll, we'll talk about all sorts of things, I'm sure. And um, I wanted to make sure everybody is takes time to go look at the Olson Larson Gallery. The show is mounted. It's a great show. It combines 10 artists from the Des Moines Arts Festival. But it really looks at this idea that we as artists change and evolve and emerge, uh, not just as young artists coming into our own as adults, but really as artists, we're constantly evolving. And really as people, we are constantly changing. Life changes. Uh, now we have COVID-19. So with that, let's talk to Patricia. Be sure to talk, uh, connect with um, Olson Larson Galleries and the Des Moines Arts Festival and trying to remember all the housekeeping things I'm to share, but I'd rather talk <laughs> about art. So let's do that. Patricia, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Um, I don't think anybody gets to see much of anybody at, at, anymore. At least uh, it seems a little bit different than, uh, let's say, going to arts festival every weekend and being barraged by hundreds of thousands of people. Screen um, time is pretty, pretty, pretty special right now. You know, tell us about that because uh, you, you, you spoke to that last time we chatted and um, to give it a special, give it the designation of special time seems to be a, a much more positive and very personal outlook on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually my day-to-day -day reality and I feel like this for a lot of our artists, friends, our day-to-day -day hasn't changed very much. Um, you know, we go to our studios, we spend probably the day by ourselves. What's changed is our ability to meet the public, see our people face-to-face, -face, you know, talk about our work with people that we may not know. That is something that we're really missing. Um, and of course, the travel. You but I'm travel? thinking, um, at the same time, one of the positive things that's coming out of it is just kind of getting into the rhythm of the everyday. I'm in the same place every day for once in my life. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, interesting. And do you find that you have time to reflect and think about your work? Or do you find it um, more of a chore to find that routine again? Because I've, I've, I've seen it very different. Everybody's had a very different take and different response. Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's been so many waves of like being overwhelmed and a lot of emotion lately. So I think sometimes we're kind of busy riding all of those waves. Mm -hmm. And so that might be the only thing keeping us from like really diving into the self-reflection. But what better way to do it is like we're being, you know, faced with all of these emerging realities every day. So this is how we as artists react to it. You know, it's interesting because when you think about it, one of the common conversations that's come up is that balance between the business of art and the actual spiritual or vis uh, visual pursuit of art, depending on what brings a person to making things. And um, we, as makers, we love to do what we do and we, we're explorers, if you will, of the emotions or of the visual or the materials. But we're also humans that need to support a household, carry our kids, manage our house, our obligations and things like that. Um, so to have the freedom of time, you know, I remember um, in my 20s going to the Jurassic Foundation and this is this is gonna I don't usually talk about this, but it's interesting. Their premise at the Jurassic Foundation, which is a residency for artists in Northern California, was the gift of time. Mm -hmm. You get if you get into their program, they feed you, they lodge you, and they give you the ability to just be there and support all your basic needs and you can make art. Mm -hmm. It's structured that way. It was a great opportunity. Um, here we have time, but time doesn't always necessarily provide the confidence or the comfort to have the space and to, to just really be in that zone, unless you have the 
ability either as an artist having achieved a certain financial well-being or to be able to at least feel comfortable with that uncertainty yeah um but your work is so into i mean i i personally think your work is very intimate a lot of it is is, is as much about this kind of internal space and so okay. i would think this could be an interesting time for you to reflect and to be able to work on the day-to-day -day of making what you do because that personal space is so much of what this time's about. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, oftentimes when we're on the road and we have, you know, three weeks in between shows or sometimes even less, you know, it's hard to kind of um, get yourself into the rhythm of like really doing the deep dives that are necessary that um, can lead to like the little bits of revelation that can really fuel a beautiful piece. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like this is one of those times, it's, it's this time where things can start falling into place. And um, for me, I have, um, I've changed my work a few times in the past like 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I began as a photographer doing, using antique, um, and analog methods. And then I taught myself how to paint an encaustic and now I'm just doing a straight out mixed media. But in between the times, like there's these, there are these moments where you're in the, you're in the kind of like the pod and you're just allowing things to kind of like nurture you and you're, um, you're feeding yourself so that you can emerge and produce something that is in tune with where you are. And mm -hmm. I feel like this time it's been productive, but I feel like it's one of those times where um, just having this time and this like rhythm is going to lead to a very productive time. But um, I think that's really definitely re around the corner. So it's leading up to it's It's feeding into mm -hmm. it, you will. Definitely. Well, you would send some newer work. Um, I know we had some older pieces that we, we shared with the public, um, but the, the larger, there's a couple pieces, one, um, and I'm blanking the names, but it's the, I think it's Lotus possibly. It, um, is a lotus, yeah. it was, it was the flower, but it was also just a very centered piece. Um, very bold. Um, it actually anchors a wall that you come around one gallery and you look into it and it helps. Um, and then you also had a very quiet, I'm a little more contemplative. Well, they're both contemplative. There's just one's visually very active, but centered. Mm -hmm. And the other one, much stiller, a little less about the figurative, like you had done in the prior pieces where you had the animals, where you had uh, the, the I, I call it the kind of the, maybe you actually wrote about this, I, I don't remember, but the spiritual totems mm -hmm. and the, you know, there's a lot more going on with con direct content, visual content, and it became more subtler. Um, yes. What's encouraged that move and what would you, you know, how, how has that contextual or, or symbolic move also changed in the application of, the, of, of your material? Because with mixed media, that helps reinforce your themes. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. I, I think when I when I started making work, I've always been very attached to using a lot of symbols. Mm -hmm. So growing up Catholic, uh, my visual education was very much about, you know, the saints and seeing how these figures were covered and the symbols that were an expression of whatever internal, you know, experience they were having. So that that was a fascinating way to grow up because I always um, put together literal sil symbols and the figure. Um, and the older I get, I think the more space I want to create for something that's more universal and um, timeless and kind of a, a more of a reflection of our impermanence, which is really powerful right now. I mean, we're, 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 traversing this unknown territory every single day, which is why I really love this idea of the Emerging Horizons show. I think it's so powerful um, because we're just walking through this landscape. We're 
we're changing every moment and our reactions are then open to being a little bit more open. And as artists, it's the space to pivot, which, sure. um, which is the whole idea behind the show. Yeah, and it, the, um, just getting back to the media, I think um, there was certain threads that have always run through my work, um, just kind of a love of trans translucency, as in my encaustic, um, a lot of kind of an insistence on a lot of texture. I just love a lot of texture. And um, so, and the more abstracted pieces that we were talking about, it's a really wonderful way of putting all of that together. Like you'll have the little delicacy of a little bit of the gold leaf that has been in my work for a long time, but then a lot of um, this abrasion, which keeps it from being um, more formal and more, um, what's the word? Um, there's a word that I'm trying to remember right now, but, um, yeah, so it's just, it's a nice, more open space, which I've really been enjoying. It's, it's interesting because it's still layered, you know, in many ways mm -hmm. you have, and when I think of layers, I think of depth, like there's, there's, there's meaning behind meaning, there's material, yes. overlapping material, there's, um, and at the same time, the use of these, the texture or the gold leaf, all go back in the thread of your own work. And so there's a history that you bring forward as you start to change the arrangement. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not a historian, so I, I can't speak to all the work, you know, it's why it's not a retrospect. It's not, it's why it's not technically a retrospective because, right, right. but it's, but it was, it was as much about looking at artists' decisions or the 10 of you that I, that we, mm -hmm. that I selected essentially. And, um, looking at how you have similarities, but you have very distinct work, you know, mm -hmm. and those similarities are really born out of the, the maturity as, as an artist of, of, of engaging yourself and your medium and, and taking it forward and adapting because I think, that is such an interest, you know, interesting exploration or, or really a reflection of what it is to be an artist. And frankly, human, <laughs> because absolutely, I think, uh, I mean, in your work in particular, when I think about the spiritual side of what we are as, as beings and trying to understand ourselves in a larger context, your work speaks to that. Um, you know, and, our, and, and, and I like the fact that you start with symbols, but in some respects, those symbols are becoming less and less um, prominent. Absolutely, I agree. And, but yet the significance that maybe, because sim symbols have a root, they have an existence and they have a starting point. I mean, many symbols are part of a language of its own. And, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I think some of us, some of us are identify with symbols that we can't even understand, but that gets into a whole esoteric conversation. Right. We don't even know why we're attracted to some things, mm -hmm. um, some forms and yeah, that's, they're often so ancient, but I think finding, finding a space beyond that has been really, um, kind of revelatory for me and very, um, just very gratifying because I love the idea of making something which a person from any culture, from any continent can have a, a visceral reaction to and not being into like, this looks more like this. I want it to be just wide open. That's kind of where I'm heading. So now that you're reflecting, do you have any sense of where your work's going? Do you have a, I mean, you said you're on that cusp of maybe more work or, or at least this informing the future. And maybe that's even hard to say because you really need to start putting it down. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where um, you don't really know until you're doing it, which is one of the fascinating things about art. Um, and sometimes you can get so in your head and, 
and so frustrated because you you want to you want to know what it's going to be before you start making it, but it's just not possible. So um, I've been making some smaller pieces, which are an extension of that bigger lotus piece in the show. That um, I'm beginning with pages of um, poet, some of my favorite books of poetry. Mm -hmm. So um, Walt Whitman, for example, Leaves of Grass, just kind of beginning with that very um, beautiful and old kind of like print image and then beginning to paint on it and and building this multi-layered lotus out of it which is how I feel like we're feeling right now we're just emerging from this muck of the moment and making something beautiful I really feel like for all the artists that I know right now, we, we're we feeling um, like we're big, uh, we're part of a bigger conversation, which is creating beauty and putting beauty into the world right now. So I feel like that imagery will probably continue some of the Lotus imagery, but also I'm really fascinated by the two pieces that I sent to you, which are the more abstracted ones. So. And that's a wide open landscape. So I'm very excited about that too. You know, and, and, and within that, the beauty exists. It's just a quieter, subtler space in which to, which, you know, it's not as, um, it's not as um, representational, if you will. But, exactly. but I'm, um, I mean, they're both exciting. And I guess what we're going to see as makers you know, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to see what reveals in the next 12 to 24 months for artists in general, but also those of us that are tied directly or indirectly into the art shows. And as the art shows ever, emerge and artists reemerge and to see how society responds to that. So knowing that um, um, I think we touched on your work itself, mm -hmm. the technique, what maybe what I was trying to take this in a different direction than I yeah. know because it, it, you know it's just what do you think what 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 advice do you have to the artists that are watching or the um, audiences to to kind of embrace the future um I think the moment right now is so powerful like we were saying for it's just this moment of stillness that we're all sharing and an opportunity to nourish ourselves. So I feel like that's one of the major um, advantages of the moment is like to have this time, like to get out of our heads and to just kind of do a little bit of a deep dive and, and, and grow right now. I think that's so, so powerful and going forward, it's just going to be really different because like the name of the show implies, it's this emerging horizon that we're walking through. We have the ability to make changes to the way that we're living right now and the way, I think we, were, we might have been taking a lot of things for granted for artists, you know, like being on the, just kind of like the hamster wheel of doing all the shows and just like travel, home studio travel again, again. And now we've had this moment of stillness to kind of um, appreciate it more. So I think it's going to be really interesting to get back in, to get to get back out there. However, that looks. I think that's going to be presented. You know, nobody knows what that's going to look like either. But I think I think a moment of appreciation and just like renewed renewed energy as we go forth and and enter the realms that allow us to make a living and, you know, do all the things that we need to do. I think, I think it's, I think it's exciting. It's a little scary, but it's exciting as well. You know, it's, it's, it, that's encouraging just to think that we can embrace the excitement. Maybe in doing so, it helps dispel the fear. I right? you, you know, for me, I, I, Absolutely. I'd like to think that, that that's the way through fear is so often um, embracing that which is a little uncertain but mm -hmm. finding excitement in that and I think artists uh, can sometimes what what uh, ride that wave of 
we can walk into that. We can walk towards the horizon, if you will. Let's use that metaphor since it's right. it's part of the show. And as you were describing it, that was a nice way of putting it. You know, for me, it was always about driving into it because I love the, the, <laughs> the ability of going, you know, on the road. And but it's it is very much that. It was really just a metaphor. And as we walk towards that horizon, we don't know what's there. The horizon's always out there. We're just walking towards it. Exactly. But it leaves behind the fear, or at least we learn to travel with the fear. And it's not so much that the emotion drives it as our, our kind of conviction that's even far deeper than, than the kind of turbulence of, of, of the energy of emotions, you know? And <laughs> I think that's a great, that, your point, I appreciate that. I didn't ask the question, I don't think, of anybody yet. I just, it's a nice way to end the series because, like, where are we going? <laughs> yeah, we're going. We're going we go? somewhere. <laughs> yeah, we're going somewhere. Um, now we're all, I think, being reminded that we're all going together, because sometimes we're under the um, illusion that, you know, we're all in our own little bubbles. But um, I think this is. I think this time might be a powerful reminder for um, for humanity to go forward, and not not to get too um, philosophical about it, but. I feel like there are those undercurrents that might be um, a good reminder for us. And I, so I have an, a quote from one of my favorite artists, which is Kiki Smith, the mm. American artist. Um, artists live in unknown spaces and give themselves over to follow something unknown. And I kind of feel like in a nutshell, that's what we're all doing right now. It's a great, that's a great summary. So, <laughs> so, we are going to avoid the rat race for a while. Yeah. Find that that unknown space and sit in it. And um, with and that. Find nourishment. What's find nourishment? Yeah, I think that's important. Agreed. Agreed. Of course, the Des Moines Arts Festival is reinventing itself as well. And, and they're working hard to come up with lots of fun ideas <laughs> um, on how to, to make a festival. 360 yeah. you know last 365 how do you it's funny that our as an as an event uh the board over the last few years had actually re reinvented its five-year plan to rethink the festival as um as something that could exist 365 days a year while we have a focus point around those three days at the end of june this is forcing that whole agenda into play in a way that we didn't really anticipate so interesting. So it's, it's it'll be it should be a lot of fun. It's not easy, but nothing amazing is. And a lot of times mm -hmm. we have to walk a uh, walk that line. And and so be sure to check out the arts festival. Check out Patricia's work. And I thank you so much for taking time today to to share about your work a little bit more and to help people better understand what drives you and what motivates you and what uh, what what you do. Yeah, and thank you. I know this has been a labor of love for you and um, between you and Stephen and the gallery, I think it's been a really beautiful um, occurrence in this whole time. So thank you so much. My pleasure. That's a nice, nice way to end. So with that, Chad and Happy right. signing off. Check us out All next right. time. All right. I look forward to seeing you in person, maybe next year. I look forward to that. Yeah. All right, Chayden. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia. All right. Bye. You you too.